Running out of battery power is no fun. It can be very inconvenient. I'm sure it happened to you once or twice. It definitely happened to me. So how do we monitor the state of charge of our battery or battery system so that we can avoid these kind of situations? And how do we monitor it in a very easy, reliable and possibly cost efficient way? Well, in this short video, I'll run you through the different options that you have for monitoring your battery or battery bank. I'll tell you the specific advantages and what to look out for. And then with this information, you can make an informed decision about what the best option is for you. Before we go ahead, let me introduce myself. My name is Jesse. I'm a renewable energy engineer and I'm specialized in off-grid battery-based solar energy systems. I have run companies in the design and installation of off-grid solar energy systems and I've held the position of energy officer for the United Nations. I founded the company Solar Solution through which I provide videos such as this. I share my knowledge and experience through articles and I provide personal direct support through services on my website. My goal in this video is to make you aware of the different options that you have for monitoring your battery system. At the same time, I'll also make sure to point out to you what the risks are for misinterpreting the data that will be supplied to you in the future, whichever method you'll be using. I'll discuss the different topics in four separate sections. The first one, we'll look at voltage measurement. We'll look at specific gravity measurement, the calculation of state of charge. And in the last topic, I'll give you one bulletproof tip for how to manage your battery system. So let's look at the first option, voltage measurement. So this is easily done. It's fairly inexpensive. It's easy to understand. And a lot of people use this approach. Now, the theory of this approach is that as you charge the battery, the electrical pressure inside of the battery, being the voltage, increases. And therefore, if you take a multimeter or whatever kind of device, you measure the voltage, it will give you a fairly accurate representation of how full the battery is. Now, the challenge with this approach is that there are many factors that can easily affect the outcomes and therefore misled you in believing that the state of charge is different from what it actually is. Examples of such can be whether or not you're measuring at the right point, whether your measuring equipment is adequate, the, whether you have incorporated the temperature effect on the voltage. And for example, if somebody is charging or discharging the battery at the same time as you're measuring it. Now, if you'd be aware of these risks and take the appropriate actions that would mitigate their negative impact or completely cancel them out, then voltage measurement can be a fairly reliable way to measure the state of charge of your battery. But please keep in mind that your measurement resolution is not optimal. So this means that a very, very small change in voltage can actually resemble a fair amount of change in the state of charge of your battery system. And the second thing you should keep in mind is that the relationship is not always linear. So a certain change in voltage doesn't always mean the same change in state of charge. So please keep these two things in mind. Now the second option you have is to measure the specific gravity of the electrolyte in your battery system. So to put a lot of theory in a few simple words, what happens in your battery during charge and discharge is that the acid in your battery travels between the battery water and the lead place and back into the battery water again. So as this happens, the density of your battery water changes. So now what you could do is take a floating object, float it in your battery water, as the density increases, this object would float higher on top of the water. And as the density decreases, the object would float a little bit deeper into the water. So this is basically how these meters work. They would take the density of your battery water and compare it to clean water. So clean water is considered to have a value of 1. Now, if the density of your battery water would be 50% more dense than clean water, it would have the value of 1.5. Twice as dense, it would have the value of 2. Now, when you're properly using this approach, it can be a really reliable indicator of the overall condition of your battery system, as well as the state of charge. But just like as with the voltage measurement option, it is susceptible to misinterpretation and misreadings. Something that is often overlooked is temperature correction of your measurement, since as the temperature changes, the density of your battery water also changes. The other thing which is often misunderstood is that if you lose some of your acid due to sulfation of your battery, this is acid that cannot be regained. It is lost and it cannot be turned back into acid again. The last thing to be aware of while doing this type of measurement is that stratification can occur in the battery. Since the acid is heavier than water itself, if you leave the battery in an idle state for a long time, the acid will accumulate at the bottom of the battery. And therefore, if you would now take a sample from the top of the battery, you're actually measuring almost only water. 
and your indications would be completely off. Now the last option is the calculation of the state of charge of your overall system. So what would happen here is that you would install certain small equipment in your system that would measure the total flow of electricity going in and out of your battery. It would then apply certain correction factors and basically the sum of all these calculations would tell you the amount of energy that is still being stored in your setup. The advantage of this approach is that it can give you a very easy to understand number that can tell you the state of charge battery being the percentage state of charge. It's very easy to understand this number. Now, just as with the other two options though, also measuring the state of charge comes with its own inaccuracies. One of the most common things I can see going wrong with these kind of systems in the field is that they have not been set up or configured properly. So basically somebody needs to tell this equipment what kind of batteries it is looking at, what kind of charging and discharging coefficient it should use, and when it can safely assume that the battery is 100% full, when it's 100% uh, charged. Now, that being said, if all the configuration and its installation is being done properly, this option can be a very reliable, very easy to understand and fairly cost efficient way of monitoring your system. As promised, in step number four, I would give you a bulletproof and fairly reliable way of monitoring the state of charge of your battery. If you have set up your charging equipment in the right way, if you entered all the right settings, once your system indicates that it has reached float stage, your battery is as full as it can possibly be. I'm specifically saying as full as it can possibly be because it doesn't mean that it now contains the amount of energy that it could contain when it was new. It just means that you have charged it as full as it can possibly be at this point in time. So what you can now do is say that this is your 100% state of charge point and start monitoring from here on forward. So now a question for you. If there's something else that you'd like to learn more about, let me know in the comments below and I'll use this as inspiration to provide more videos for you or for others. Of course, if you like the video, it's always nice to hear, so give me a thumbs up. So that's all for now and I'll see you in the next video.